Am I wrong for leaving all of my groceries at the register when the cashier refused to sell me alcohol? Abundance and Bounty are two supermarket chains, both with stores 20 minutes away from me and 15 minutes apart from each other. I, 33 male, usually go to Abundance unless I want something I can only get at Bounty, and I haven't been asked for ID when buying alcohol in over 8 years at either store, or anywhere else for that matter. I went to Abundance yesterday to buy my weekly groceries and picked up a six pack of beer to enjoy on the weekend. I set the beers down in front of my other groceries on the conveyor belt, then moved to the other side to start packing. The cashier saw the beer and asked me for ID. I told him I didn't have any ID on me and he told me he couldn't sell me the beer and place it on the side. I politely said, okay, no problem, have a nice day, and then walked away, leaving all of my groceries on the conveyor belt. I didn't take anything. As I walked away, he shouted, excuse me, sir, but I saw no reason to waste time on continuing a discussion because he already made his decision. And I understand how strict they need to be when it comes to alcohol and ID. My mother worked in a liquor store for several years. To be very clear, I did not do this to get back at him, but rather because it meant I needed to go to Bounty to get the beer. And it didn't make sense to drag all of my heavy grocery items from Abundance to Bounty when I could just get the same groceries from Bounty, including the beer. I also figured carrying bags of groceries from Abundance around Bounty wasn't wise because it might raise suspicion of shoplifting. So I went from Abundance to Bounty, bought everything I needed from Bounty, including the beer, then went home. When I got back, my girlfriend asked why it took so long, and after explaining it, she said I was an asshole for making things difficult for the staff at Abundance. Because they would need to restock all of my stuff and possibly throw things away. I don't know if the last part is true, but she knows someone who works in a similar store and explained that they're pretty strict on how long certain products are allowed to be outside the freezer and refrigerators. She also said it was extremely rude that I just walked away when the cashier was trying to talk to me. I asked what she would have done, but she didn't have an answer besides just coming home without the beer, but I don't see that as a solution. So, am I the asshole? You are 1000% trying to be rude and petty. Don't even try. Or else you would have looked back and be like, yeah, if the guy's calling your name, why would you not look back? What if he's like, oh, I'll give you the beer then? Well, you don't know. You wouldn't be an asshole. My husband, 36 male, doesn't want me, 38 female, to use our IVF embryos because he doesn't feel ready to have kids yet. My husband and I have known each other for 12 years and have been married for the last three. We started living together in 2016 and close to two years later, he lost his job and was working dead-end jobs for close to a year. We decided that he would take classes and get a trade so he can get a better job. I work in healthcare and make decent money, so I was okay to take over the bills. After he finished classes, he still had a hard time finding a job because of COVID. So overall, for the last four years, I paid for everything. Rent, bills, food, everything. I want to have children. He knew this early in our relationship. He at the time said that he could see that happening for him one day, but not now. Because it was taking him a long time to get a job and I was getting older, I asked him to do IVF for embryo freezing. We did it last year and froze three embryos. Two months ago, he started a job. It's not the best salary considering the price of things nowadays, but it's okay money. I told him I want for us to try and get pregnant now or use the embryos. He said he's not ready to have kids right now. I told him I don't really have any more time to wait and even though we have the embryos, we don't know if they will actually work. So I really think we need to start trying. And also, there are very few men who actually get to a point when they can actually say that they are ready for kids. After several discussions and arguments, we came to the conclusion that if I'm not able to wait until he is ready and he has no idea when that will be, then we will have to get a divorce. He told me he doesn't want a divorce, but he can't get on board with having kids right now. If I end up not having children because of him, I will resent him greatly. And I feel that I put so much into this marriage and supported him when he was down on his luck, it's unfair to me to walk away with nothing now. At this point, I can proceed with an IVF transfer. There's nothing needed from his end. I am financially capable of having a child without his help and my family would help with the physical load a little bit. He said he doesn't want me to use the embryos without his approval because he wouldn't want to have kids in the world and he's not a part of their lives. I do love him and I don't want to have to choose between keeping my marriage or having a child. But I very much do want to have children and don't think I can forgive him if he takes that away from me. While I don't want to force him to do something he's not comfortable with, I don't think it's fair that I should walk away with nothing after putting so much into the marriage and supporting him for all those years when he wasn't capable. Story time about how I messed up by sleeping with my HR manager. Of some note to the story, I was hired by the GM as the HR manager was on stress leave. Fast forward a few months and I hit the end of my probation, which meant that I get a small raise. To celebrate having a bit more spare cash, some friends from school and I decided to go out for drinks. We ended up meeting some friendly women and getting to know them over a few drinks. One thing led to another and I ended up going home with one. She was a lovely woman and around three or four years older than me. We did the deed and said our goodbyes. Come Monday, I head into work. 
still feeling good about the weekend. About an hour in, my boss comes to tell me that an HR manager is back and wants to do meet and greets with everyone that was hired in her absence. I'm penned in just for after lunch. I head into HR a tad early, and lo and behold, my boss and another employer are chatting with a woman from the other night. We make eye contact and she looks shocked and asks me what I'm doing there. I explain that I work here and I'm here for my meet and greet and ask what she's doing there. She says she's the HR manager and my jaw drops a bit. My boss makes a joke about us staring at each other and leaves. We end up having a nice chatting getting to know each other a bit better. Neither of us bring up the past activities. Fast forward about two weeks and I'm suddenly called in the office by HR. I'm promptly informed by her that there is a strict no romantic relationships amongst employees policy in place and they had been informed that I had broken this rule. Five minutes later, I'm being escorted from the building. It was a hard few months after that trying to balance work and going to school. I spent almost all of my savings on rent and ended up leaving town to move in with some family until I was back on my feet. It was not a fun time in my life. I heard my wife's phone ringing in her purse. She was already in bed, so I reached in there and got it out to hand it to her. When I went to retrieve the phone, I also saw some candy in there. So I got the pack of candy out also and ate the small pack of about 11 pieces of Sour Patch Kids. I woke up about 3 a.m. in the morning having to use the bathroom. When I went to go to stand up, I felt really woozy. I thought this was because I was recently diagnosed with MS and I thought it was a side effect of my MS. I stumbled onto the bathroom and I had to sit on the toilet just to pee. I get back to bed and I could not hold a coherent thought in my head. I'm thinking, oh my God, if MS is causing this confusion, there's no way I can live like this. Mm. My mind is steady racing. I wake up my wife and tell her how I feel. I tell her if I don't wake up or if I go crazy, tell my kids I love them. She asked me if I want to go to the ER. I said no because my dad suffers from panic attacks and anxiety. He goes to the ER twice a week because of it. I was thinking maybe I might just be having a panic attack. I was like, my wife has good insurance on me, so if I die, they'll be taken care of. I finally fall back asleep. My wife wakes up to go to work the next morning. She asked, does she need to call in work and take me to the doctor? I told her no. She then walks to my side of the bed and sees the empty candy wrapper. Then she asks me, quote, did you eat my candy? I get a good look at the candy wrapper she's holding up since all the lights are on. I see her holding the empty wrapper of what I thought was Sour Patch Kid gummies. They were actually edibles called Stony Patch Kids. Then she starts laughing and says, that's what you get for going in my purse without asking asking me. I knew it the second you started. Oh yeah, for sure. 100%. <laughs> of course. I've told my story. I don't know if you have told your weird like jerky story. Jerky? No, no, no. Dentist. Yeah. No. yeah. I, rem- I knew getting that's what you were getting at. Getting yeah. high at the dentist? No, he got so high the night before that yeah. he woke up high still. Yeah. yeah. I had no idea. I don't know. I thought it was candy. I Literally don't... the same thing. Wait, I know. really? Yeah. Huh. No, that's a lie. No, it's not. You knew they were gummies. Yeah, I thought you that was You just didn't, purpose. you thought they were old and so they weren't working. So you Jake, took like 10 of them. Jake told me potency goes down. So you knew they were gummies. Yes. <laughs> you just thought they were, I, didn't think they were potent. I believe. Yeah, he thought they were like just candy at I that point. I believed that all the effects had gone away because, you know, Jake's an expert in the field. That's like my friend mm-hmm. with coffee. She thinks that it sits out for two hours and there's no more <sighs> caffeine. <laughs> <laughs> Who thinks that? Kennedy. Oh my god, that's not how that works. Am I wrong for telling my fiance she looked weird on our wedding night? Um, it's only supposed to be the day she's supposed to feel most confident. So we'll see. I, 32 male, have been dating Sarah, 29 female, for over two years. I love her to death and she means the world to me. Also, she's a person who's comfortable with her skin and doesn't use a lot of makeup, which I really adore. And as a couple, we're always honest and tell the truth to one another no matter what. So yesterday was our wedding and the moment I saw her there, I was shocked. She used a huge amount of makeup that I barely recognized her without hearing her voice. I guess she saw my facial expression and that I was acting a little out of ordinary and asked me what was wrong. So I told her, oh my goodness, that it's nothing but she looked a little weird with all that makeup on her face. She tried to laugh it off and started talking to her other friends, but to be honest, at that moment, I didn't think it was a big deal. Am I wrong for telling my fiancé that on our wedding night she looked weird? She saw my facial expression that I was acting a little out of the ordinary and asked me what was wrong. And remember, we're always honest, so I said it's nothing, but she does look a little weird with all that makeup on her face. She tried laughing it off and started talking to her other friends, and to be honest, I didn't think I said something wrong. Especially because she didn't say anything. However, when we got home, she started to give me the cold shoulder treatment. Of course, I asked her what was wrong, and she said it's nothing, and she doesn't feel well, and she's tired. To be honest, I think she's hiding something, and that got me wondering if it may be what I said. (laughs) Duh. Edited to add, thank you guys, I realized how I totally effed up and how my comment was misinterpreted.
I do plan on apologizing and I will try to fix things. Yep, top comment says, on the day she's meant to feel most beautiful and stunning, you pulled a funny and told her she looked weird. What a shitty start.